Hello everyone and welcome to another Twin Stitches Designs tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to knit some socks toe up. Now this tutorial is going to show you everything from casting on to binding off. We are going to have um, a lot of fun with these different methods. We're going to be cutting in our heel for an afterthought heel. We're going to be using some new techniques like the Turkish cast on, so get your yarn, get your needles ready, and let's do this. You're going to need a 100 gram skein of yarn. Today I'm going to be using for the tutorial Tia's Terrific Threads in her Strong Sock Base. And this is a your If You're Happy colorway out of 80% BFL and 20% nylon. I mean, you guys, check out these amazing colors. I'll link her shop down below if you would love to grab some self-striping yarns. It is beautiful. So you'll need your yarn, and I'm gonna be doing this today on some Magic Loop needles. I have 2.5 millimeter needles on a 32 inch cord. So now that we have all of our supplies, let's get going with the Turkish cast on. To start with your Turkish cast on, you are going to do a slip knot and leaving a little bit of a tail. It doesn't need to be too long. We just leave in this tail so that we can weave in our ends later when our sock is done. So you're going to place your slip knot on the top needle. You want to set up your needles so they're facing away from you. A Turkish cast on, we cast on half the amount of stitches than it asks for in your pattern. So we're going to be doing the size medium and I ask for 24 stitches. So we are gonna wrap this yarn around our needles 12 times. So it looks like this, it's very simple. So you're gonna take both needles and you're gonna wrap. So this is one. So you're gonna do this 12 times. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Here, you're gonna make sure that you're holding tension with that working yarn so nothing unravels and you're gonna turn your work for it to face you, always holding that tension. You're gonna pull out this bottom needle and you're gonna work the top stitches. Um, you're just gonna knit them. So we hold the tension and we're just gonna go in and we're gonna knit. It is gonna seem a little fiddly. It's gonna feel um, as if you wanna really tug on your stitches and don't worry. Once you knit that second row, oh, we're gonna get it. Once you knit that second row, it will all feel normal again. So you just want to knit with normal tension, not pulling too hard. And there we go. So we are going to turn our work where the needles are facing you. Push in this needle. And now we're gonna be pulling out the bottom needle. You can see here, your slip knot is separate from those cast on stitches. With a Turkish cast on, we actually remove the slip knot and we just continue knitting all of those stitches. That slip knot um, is really just there to get us started. So now we're just gonna knit the stitches on the second needle. And that's it. That is your Turkish cast on. Now you're ready to start increasing for your sock on these two corners. So in our pattern, it says knit one, knit front and back, knit to two stitches, knit front and back, knit one. We're gonna complete this, and then we're gonna do one knit round. You wanna complete these two rounds until you have a total of 64 stitches on your needle. So it looks something like this. So we're gonna go into our first stitch. It says knit one. And then we're gonna do a knit front and back. So we're knitting twice into this one stitch, which, in, which increases it by one. So you're gonna knit it normal. And rather than take that little strand off, you're gonna knit in the back of the stitch. So from that one stitch, you're creating two stitches. So then it has us knitting to two stitches before the end of the round. So 
So now that we're at the last two stitches, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to knit front, then we're going to go in that back and knit from the back. Knit one and turn. We're going to complete the same thing on this needle, and then we're going to do one knit round. So I'll show it to you again. We're going to knit one, then we're going to go into here. We're going to go knit front, then knit in the back. There's multiple ways that you could do the increases. You could do a make one. Um, you could also do some yarn overs. There's different ones. I absolutely love a knit front and back. I find they're simple to do and I really like them. Um, so it really is up to you what, what kind of look that you like for your toe up. So again, we are at the last two stitches. We're going to knit in the front and knit in the back. Knit one. And there we go, you guys. So from here, we're going to do a full knit round and then we're going to continue our increases. Just going to knit around. Okay, so we just finished our first increase round and our first knit round. Your work should look something like this. So you see your cast on edge is completely seamless, um, really looking great. So from here, we're gonna continue knitting these two rounds until you've reached the number of stitches in your pattern. For the medium size, we wanna knit this until we reach 64 stitches. And I'll meet you back here once we've done that. Now that we've finished all of our increases, your toe should look like this. You would have 32 stitches on each needle for a total of 64 stitches. I decided to put a little tiny stitch marker here to let me know that this is my first needle and that's my second needle. So now we're going to continue knitting uh, plain or if you're doing a pattern sock, remember to only do it on half because you only want it on the top of your foot. And um, in the next clip I'm going to show you how to calculate how long to knit your sock, where you should be cutting in your heel, and um, all of those details. Now that we're ready to continue knitting on our sock, I wanna share with you guys how to measure where to cut in your heel. So you will first have to take your full foot length. You will measure from the ball of your heel all the way to your largest toe. So my measurement is nine inches. You're then gonna take your toe, which will be um, approximately 1.75 inches long, and your heel is about 1.75 inches. So this is from where we've cast on to completing our toe is approximately in those length. So you are then gonna take your full foot measurement minus your heel and minus your toe, will give you 5.5 inches for my sock. Now let me show you on a real pair of socks what this looks like. For this pair, I just I knit them cuffed down, but then I cut in my heel. So I knit these completely cuffed down, and then I cut in the heel where I wanted them to be. So if I measure after starting the toe, all the way up from your last increases where you're really starting your pattern, you're gonna start to measure there, 5.5 inches brought me to this mark right here. This is where you would be putting your stitch marker to mark where you would be cutting in your heel. And then you can continue to knit however long you want that leg to be. Once you have this mark, if you love knitting shorty socks, well then you'll knit another two to three inches however long. I knew that I wanted, you know, a good five, five and a half inches as well from the cuff. So I continued knitting on till that length. However long you want to knit is up to you. I know that I will be knitting five, 0.5 inches for my foot and my husband my husband's foot measurement is 10 so for his pair of socks for an example we'll do the 10 inches minus 1.75 minus 1.75 for his pair of socks I knit to 6.5 inches before putting in the heel so I hope that makes sense for you guys um, it really just is you measure from the stop of your toe all the way to your foot length. I found that this measurement really works and um, is perfectly fitting for me and my husband as well. So I'm going to meet you back here once we are ready to do our ribbing for the cuff. 
Now that we've knit our two, we are ready to do our heel and we are also ready to start the ribbing. Now you'll see that I will be cutting in my heel before I do my ribbing. I just want to show you guys where to measure, how to cut, how to do the heel, um, and I will just go and do the ribbing after. Because I am using a contrast color for the heel, it doesn't really matter because I'm not going to be cutting my main color of yarn. I will be picking up these stitches here. Um, for the heel. Now, when we went into the last video, I shared with you guys how to calculate how many inches to place your heel. We had calculated for my husband, it was 6.5 inches. Now, let me show you how this works. I want to point out that right here, you see a little dent. So I had a little fun with nine inch circular needles. I tried them out. I still don't like them, but I wanted to try them out. I also noticed my gauge was a little loose, so I went down to 60 stitches here. Um, it won't make a big difference. I did not want to rip back out. It my, it won't bother my husband. He tried them on and he said it fits fine, but I really like a, a tighter gauge. So how you measure is you will start measuring where your increase is stopped. Um, I had calculated with you guys that it's about 1.75 inches for your toe and you can see right here it's about 1.75 to 2 inches. We start measuring from the stop of your increases. So if I go right here you see it's 6.5 inches which means that we are going to be cutting in right here and placing our heel. You'll notice I also placed two stitch markers to where my heel is supposed to be. This helps me make sure that I pick up the right row as well as the right amount of stitches. You will always be picking up half the amount of stitches that you would normally have for your circumference. So if you have 64 stitches on your needle, you would be picking up 32, 60 stitches, 30, and so on and so forth because you are only working half of the needles. What we're going to also do is we're going to pick up the row above and we are also going to pick up the row below. Now do not worry, I will hold your hand through this whole process and we're going to go through it together. A few tips and tricks to make sure that um, you can get the right fit. So for a afterthought heel, it can be a little fiddly the first few times. Um, the first time I did it, I know that I wanted more of the um, room around the heel. If you notice the top of your foot can get a little tight where your heel would be in the back, I would highly recommend adding a few plain rows before you start the decreasing for your heel. I recommend anywhere between three to five plain knit rounds before starting the decreases and we'll get through that. Um, for me, I like three and I usually do five plain for my husband. You will definitely find a recipe that works for you. If you try an afterthought heel and it doesn't fit well, um, definitely take note of that. Try adding a few more rows if it, you find it's tight. Also, what you can change is um, where you are decreasing to. If you find this is too wide, you can decrease to more, um, more stitches. So you can play around and find the perfect recipe for you. Like I mentioned, for me, I like three plain knit rounds, and for my husband, it's five. So what you'll need for this, you will need another pair of circular needles or the one that you already have. Uh, I use a tapestry needle to pick out the yarn as well as, I know it's going to be scary, but you need a pair of scissors. Now let's dive right in. I'm going to try and zoom in here, hopefully. There we go. You see this a lot clearer. You are going to be picking up, I know the purple row is going to be a little hard to see, but I know thankfully <laughs> we have this pink row. You're going to pick it up, we're going to start with the bottom, all the right legs of a stitch. Let me share with you. These right legs. So you see it's a little V. You're going to be picking up every right leg. So we're going to start on our corner and we're going to be picking up the row below the one right here. So, so as you bring it up, um, you want to pick up, like I mentioned, all these right legs. You're just going to pick it up and we are going to go all the way on our row.
You also want to make sure that you're not um, picking up, like you want to keep in the same row. That's why I love doing it right before color change because uh, you really know that you're in the same row if you have one little row above it. So we're just going to keep picking up all of those stitches, little right legs. All right, there we go. Now we should have 30 stitches on our needles. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so now that we've done one, we are going to go and pick up this pink row right above. You don't want to pick up this exact purple row. You want to pick up one before, and we are going to do the exact same thing as we are going to pick up all of those right legs. So I just like to pull my needle where it's about there and I'm just using the cords. I find it's a little easier to handle. Um, so we are gonna be picking the exact same stitches but on the row above it. So I just like to tug my, um, my work, make sure. So we're picking up this. You see this purple one? That's where we're gonna start. So we are going to be picking up every single right stitch. Okay, so now that we look again, we have our 30 stitches. I just ripped back and um, counted again. This is the reason why you wanna do this before you cut anything. So you see that we have one row in between these two picked up stitches. This is the row that you are gonna cut your yarn. I know it can be scary, but don't be scared at all. Now what you're gonna do is you're only actually gonna cut one stitch. So what I like to do is go in with my tapestry needle around the middle, doesn't have to be perfect or precise, and you wanna just pick up one stitch. You wanna make sure you know you actually only picked up a stitch, you didn't pick up anything else, you just picked up that stitch. Preferably you wanna pick up that little right leg. And I like to tug it up, and all I do, you guys, is take that little stitch, do you see it lifted up? I take my scissors, okay? and I just cut. I don't cut anything else. I don't touch anything else. Now what I'm gonna do with my tapestry needle is I'm just gonna go and I tug on the strands of yarn. So you wanna take it and just tug on that little strands of yarn and you're gonna see that it's gonna unravel. Now you don't wanna to pull too much on the other stitches. Um, you just wanna take that and pull that yarn through. Now what I do recommend is that you don't go to the end completely, that you stop the two stitches before the end. This will help you with any gaps that could be in the way. Um, again, this is something that you could change. You could go to one stitch or even three stitches. Um, I prefer two stitches. That's just how I work and I like the fit of it. I don't find that there's any issues with gaps. Also, when you cut in the middle with your yarn, it's gonna help if you have to weave in any ends later. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to go off to the other side and do the exact same thing. So you're just going to take and you're just going to pull that yarn through to every single stitch. Don't try to do multiple stitches at once. Just try to do one little stitch. 
That purple is so hard to see. <laughs> there we go. I just want to do one by one. I absolutely love when you get to cut in between two colors. It helps so much because you're able to really see um, what row the yarn is on. Okay, I'm gonna pull in this one, and that's it. So I have these two stitches. Do I have two or three? Oh, I can do one more. So we'll do one more right here. There we go. Now our sock is wide open, you guys. Wide open. So here is where I was mentioning your plain rows. A afterthought heel is the exact same thing as your toe. Um, all you're doing is you're doing it around the heel. Now, you can go right ahead into the decreases, or you can knit some plain rounds. Now, this is where I mentioned it will help your tension in the front of your sock when you're doing um, these plain rounds on the back. So we're just going to take our needles and I'll show you how we get started in attaching our yarn. Take your way, um, your contrast color or whichever yarn you're going to be using and we are going to attach it. You, again, you want to leave a little bit of a tail whenever you're adding another color. This helps for you to weave in any ends later. Okay. The first two stitches are going to be very tight because you didn't unravel them and that is okay. If you see any stitches are ever twisted, you can just knit in the back of them and they will untwist on the next round. So again, leaving a tail, we're just going to go in and we're going to knit. Take our yarn and we are going to be knitting across. So these are for my husband, which means that I will be doing five plain knit rounds before starting the decreases. I'm sorry if the needles are scratching a little bit for you guys. Turn your work. Pull the needle through. Now when you see these tails, you just put them in, in your sock, and those will be so useful later to weave in any, um, any gap that could be shown in your heel. So I'm just going to continue knitting across. So we just worked our first round all the way across. Um, just gonna pull the needle through here. 
As always, you may notice that this is a little loose because you attached a new yarn. Um, all I do is I sometimes tug on the next row and I put these little tails in. You definitely want to put them in because um, you will be closing this and grafting this together. So you don't want those tails out. You definitely want to put them in your sock. Now we are just going to be continue knitting around and around for however many plain knit rounds before your decreases. I will be doing five full rounds and I'll meet you back here and we are going to start decreasing for our heel. Now that you've finished your setup rounds, we're going to go in and work the heel. Now when I mentioned that it's going to be the same thing as the toe, the decreases here are going to resemble exactly the same thing as your toe. So we did this toe up, which means that we increased. Um, you notice that we did one round of increase, one round of knit increase and knit. We're going to do that exact same pattern here, but instead of increasing, we are going to be decreasing. So we're first going to start with a knit one. Then we're going to do a slip, slip, knit. So we knit them together and we're going to knit to three stitches before the end. So we're just going to knit all of these stitches. So now that we're at the three stitches before the end, we're gonna knit these two together and then knit one. To knit together, you just pass them in together and you knit. So this decreases. Knit one and we're gonna turn our work. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. We are going to knit one we're going to slip, slip, and you always slip purl wise, and then we're gonna knit these two together. Oh, we got a little bit of a, there we go. We're gonna knit to the three stitches before the end, then we'll knit two together and knit one. Read the three stitches. We're gonna knit these two together, pass them together, knit, knit one. For the next row, we are going to knit all of the stitches. So this is exactly what we're gonna be doing until we've reached 12 stitches for the size that I'm knitting on each needle. Depending on what your pattern says, um, I am need, knitting the medium size, so I'm gonna be going to 12 stitches on each needle for a total of 24. Now, if this sounds familiar, we cast on 24 stitches, so it's gonna be the exact same um, kind of length here as your heel. So I'm gonna meet you back here once we finish all of these decreases, follow the pattern, and knit to as many decreases as you need to, and I'll show you how to finish Kitchenering your heel. Now that you've done all your decreases for your toe, it will look like this. All your decreases are leaning towards the center, and you have 12 stitches on each side, or the number that your pattern says. To close up this gap, we are gonna be doing the Kitchener stitch. To do this, you will be needing a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. You wanna be leaving yourself a tail, um, I would say between six to eight inches. 
And you're going to be using your tapestry needle. Just put it in. And this is how I like doing the Kitchener stitch. You knit one off, you purl one on. You go to the back needle, you purl one off, and knit one on. So this is how it looks. You're gonna take the first stitch, you're gonna knit it off, completely off of your needle. Pass your yarn through. It is gonna be loose, don't worry. Once you come into the second stitch on your bottom needle, you're gonna purl it on. You're gonna go to your back needle. You're gonna purl it off. Then you're gonna go to the back needle, knit one on, making sure you're not twisting any yarn. Go back to the front, we're gonna knit one off, purl on. Knit, uh, purl one off, almost messed up there, and knit one on. Keep going, knit off, and purl on. You're just gonna continue doing this all the way down the needle until there's no stitches left. If you also notice, I'm always tugging because I want to make sure that I'm closing up that gap really nicely. So purl, purl off, knit on. Oh, knit off, purl on. I was just making sure I had the same amount of stitches. Knit off, purl on. And you see this is really closing up nicely here. We're almost to our last stitches. As you're getting to your last stitches as well, um, it could start getting fiddly. Make sure you're just holding your needles tightly so no stitches um, fall off of your needles. Whoop. So now that you're at those last two stitches, I wanted to show you, it can get a little fiddly. Um, just make sure you're holding onto your needles. Uh, they are sometimes gonna wanna slip off. So just make sure you're really holding onto those stitches. So you're always gonna knit off, purl on, purl that one off. Here is where I mean it can get fiddly. And then you're gonna knit that one on without them hopping off the needles. So now that you're at your last two stitches, you're just gonna knit this one off, and then you're gonna purl that one off. And there it is. So you see it closed up really nice. There's no gaps, there's no holes, nothing. It's really nice, even in these um, corners here, there's no real no real holes or gaps and that really helps with those um, last stitches. Now here you see that there's a little bit because that's where our working yarn started and that is where also that we have our tail so we can definitely pull that in and weave that in at the end. What we're going to be doing with this tail, you still have it on your tapestry needle. All I like to do is I go in the bottom stitch anywhere in there. Always make sure by the way it's inside um, your sock and not through it and I just pull in this needle with that yarn. 
and then I tug, make it all nice, and that's it. So this is how your heel looks. From this side, you don't see anything, and then from this side, you see how I mean that it's exactly like the toe, exactly like those decreases. So for now, where we're at, we are gonna be doing the ribbing on your sock. I wanted to show you guys that heel um, while there was daylight outside. So the cuff, you can choose whatever you would like for the cuff. You can do a knit one pearl one, you could do a knit one, knit two pearl two, whatever you would like. I personally prefer a knit two pearl two. I like um, how it works up and I like just the look of it. So I also like to do anywhere between, I would say 15 to 20 rounds, sometimes 10. Really depends how I feel um, on the length of ribbing, but I do like at least an inch to an inch and a half of rib which can sometimes be about 15, um, 15 rounds. So you're just gonna go around um, with your ribbing of choosing. And for me, like I said, it's just a knit two and purl two all around. So I'm just gonna keep going around and around my sock and for however many rows that you would like and I'll meet you back here to show you a really stretchy bind off and we are gonna be done our sock. I'm so excited you guys. We're now ready to bind off. So what we are going to do is we're going to be binding off in the ribbing. So it looks like this. You are going to knit your first stitch and this is how I like to bind off for a stretchy bind off. You're gonna put your yarn in front. You're doing some yarn overs in between your stitches, so that creates some extra fabric. You're gonna knit the second stitch, and then these two stitches, so your first stitch and your yarn over, you're gonna pass them over completely and off the needle. Let me see if I, there we go, one and two. So you're gonna continue doing that. So you can see that our next one is a purl. Now we already need our yarn in front for a purl, so you're gonna do a double. So you're bringing your yarn in front and you're, you're doing a yarn over. So you see that you have those two stitches. We're gonna take those two and we're gonna pass them over. Now this works with any type of ribbing that you're doing. If it's a knit one purl one, if it's, you just go with what the next stitch is. So our yarn is already in the front. So we're just gonna loop it again to create that yarn over. Go into purl, look at these two stitches and we are going to take it off. Our next stitch is a knit. Our yarn is already in the front, so there's no need to yarn over because when you knit from the back, you are already creating that yarn over. So we're gonna take that, those two stitches and pass them over. The next stitch is a knit. Put our yarn in the front, creates the yarn over, and continue. So we're gonna continue in this all around the sock until we get to our last stitch.
We're now at the last two purl stitches. So we're just gonna continue doing um, exactly what we've been doing, taking off these stitches. And now that you're at your last stitch, um, it's really the same thing. So we are going to be taking off these two stitches. Make sure we leave, oh, it fell off. Make sure we leave this one on and you wanna remove those two stitches. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pull that last stitch out. You're gonna take your pair of scissors and you're gonna cut yourself a little tail. And what I like to do is you're gonna take that tail and you're gonna put it through that little loop. And that really secures your bind off. And you see with this um, bind off how super loose it is. Those yarn overs really help that stretchiness for that sock. So now all we have left to do is to weave in our ends. Weave in your ends, all I do is I turn my work inside out. Um, I'm gonna show you how I weave in the cuff. You're gonna need a tapestry needle. And this is why you wanna leave those extra tails um, all through your work for that waist yarn. And I like to go here because sometimes it'll be a little uneven around these um, areas. So I just kind of like to go here and I find that it closes it up. So I'll go like one to two stitches. Everybody might do this differently, but I find that this is the way that works best for me. And I find that this closes up that nicely. So then what I'm gonna be doing is I'm actually gonna be going down into the back of these knit stitches. So this is the back of my work. This is the front and I'm bringing it down. So all I do is I go every two stitches and I bring it down. See, I'm only going in the little back of that V. And I bring it down. You don't see anything in the front. Um, you're just bringing them down. Now that we're in our purl stitches, just go behind these little tiny purl bumps. So you wanna make sure you're just going behind the purl bump and you bring it down. You wanna do this, I would say, anywhere between five to eight stitches like this is good and now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut so you see you've woven in your end it's all nice and clean and you don't see anything from the front and it's all woven in in the back of your work you're gonna do this for all of the ends in your sock and that's it. So that is the full tutorial on how to knit your socks toe up using an afterthought heel um, and I hope that you really enjoyed this pattern.